Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, let us understand the satellite communication. In the satellite communication, let us go through the elements of satellite communication and types of satellites such as Geo, Leo and Mio satellites. First of all, what is a satellite? Satellite can be defined as it is an artificial body placed in an orbit around the earth or some another planet. What the purpose we are going to have a satellite means in order to collect the information or for telecommunication purpose. This is how we can define a satellite as an artificial body which is placed and it is going to rotate in its orbit around the earth or around some other planet. These satellites can be a natural and artificial satellite. So as we know moon is a satellite which we call it as a natural satellite and the man-made satellites are called as artificial satellites. And these artificial satellites are going to be used for mobile applications such as communication to ships, vehicles, planes, handle terminals, TV, radio broadcasting and etc. So these are the different applications we are going to use the satellite communication. For electronic engineer we can say satellite is simply a repeater which is placed in a space. Since we are having a satellite in space that satellite is going to do an operation of a repeater. It is going to capture the data from one point and it is going to transmit to the other point. That's why it will be act as repeater. Here you can see this is moon. We are calling it as a natural satellite and also the art artificial satellite look like this. And why there is need for the satellite communication? Why it is required? In satellite communication, there is no geographical boundaries. We can cover throughout the geography. So satellite communication is very much helpful in long distance communication. And the important areas of application such as remote sensing, earth observation, GPS, weather forecast, internet. These are the facilities nowadays we are having because of the satellite communication. And as I said, long distance communication is achieved in the satellite communication. This is one of the major advantage in the communication sector. Similarly, distance insensitive system, it is not depending on how long the system uh, communication distance is. That's why satellite communication is very much important. What are all the frequency bands the satellites are going to use for communication means? Again, we can divide that frequency ranges from 0.1 gigahertz to 3000 gigahertz. You can observe these are very high frequency 0.1 to 0.3 we call it as very high frequency then 0.3 to 1.0 is ultra high frequency and then L, S, C, X, K, U, K, K, A, V, W, O. So these are the different band destinations and the frequency ranges which we are going to have in gigahertz. So satellite communication the frequency of signals they are going to use will be in gigahertz. Then satellite orbit which is around the earth. If we consider this as earth and this is the satellite which is moving in this orbit, you might have known the satellite is moving faster when, when it is at the perigee and it is at the apogee. As it is leaving the apogee, the satellite becomes slower and again it is come to the perigee, it will move faster. And here we can observe from this point, this is a semi-minor axis B and semi-minor axis A so that we can calculate the distance traveled by the satellite as well as the speed of the satellite. And this is the basic elements of the satellite communication system. Any communication system will be having a end user. Let me call it as user A and this as user B. If user A want to communicate with user B, here in between we are having a communication through a satellite. So from user A, it is connected to a terrestrial system. Here in the terrestrial system, we will be having the connectivity in the ground level. At the ground level, the communication is happening through a wireless or wired media through a base station or some through connected wires. So that will be connected to a earth station finally. This earth station will be having an antenna which will be act as transceiver, transmitter as well as receiver. When it is having a signal to transmit, it will transmit the signal to satellite using uplink frequencies. As we know, in the mobile communication we have seen uplink in the sense from the ground to the base station 
or we say it is a tower so this kind of communication will be called as uplink from the tower to the mobile station we are calling it as downlink here also the same concept applies antenna which is in the ground level or at the earth station it is transmitting the signal to the satellite which is above the ground level we call it as uplink and the satellite which is transmitting the signal and the earth station antenna it is receiving the signal through a downlink frequency downlink in the sense it is from the tower to the mobile station similarly here the satellite to the receiving antenna when it is which is in the ground again from the earth station it is connected to the terrestrial system where actually user b is connected with and user b will be getting the signals finally this is how the satellite communication works the major components here are the user and the satellite terrestrial network and the earth station these are the four basic elements present in the satellite communication let us understand what is a user user generates the baseband signal as we know is the information which is generated by the user that proceeds through the terrestrial network so here we need to understand what is a terrestrial network terrestrial network in the sense it is on the ground which carries the signal from the user to the earth station and it can be a telephone switch or it can be a dedicated link between the user and the earth station this is just a network present at the ground level for the communication and after the terrestrial network the signal is transmitted to a satellite at the earth station then we need to have a earth station earth station means it is a radio station located on the earth again and it is used for relaying the signals from the satellites and to the satellites it governs all the activities and transmissions happening in the satellite communication this is what the earth station where we will be having a controlling functionality for that particular satellite and we are will be having a transmission as well as reception from the ground we can say that is what the earth station is and what is the satellite then this satellite is going to consist of large number of repeaters that's why at the starting itself i said for an electronic engineer satellite in the sense it is a repeater placed in the space so that perform the reception of modulated rf carrier radio frequencies we are going to use here it is uplink frequency spectrum from all the earth stations in the present network uh, that is going to use amplifiers they retransmit them back to the earth stations in the downlink frequency spectrum to avoid the interference the downlink and uplink frequency spectrum should be separate this is also as we seen in the mobile communication the uplink frequencies are separate and the downlink frequencies are separate otherwise there will be a chance of interference occurs this is what the explanation for the basic elements of the satellite communication system and then which are the different types of satellites we have depending upon the intended mission satellites may be placed in the orbits which are varying distance from the surface of the earth depending on the surface of the earth and the distance between the satellite orbit where it is placed we are categorizing it as low earth orbit satellites medium earth orbit satellites and geostationary earth orbit satellites here in the low earth orbits we call it as leos leos medium earth orbits are called as meos meos and geostationary earth orbits are called as geos here you can observe in the figure clearly leos are very much near to the earth and meo you can observe it is compared to leo it is in the far distance from the earth similarly geos are will be in the larger distance from the earth as you can see here in this diagram from 200 to 2000 km range leo satellites will be there around 10000 to 20000 distance from the earth we will be having meo satellite orbits and around 20 to 35000 almost 36000 km away from the earth we will be having a geo satellites these are the three main important categories depending on the distance from the earth and before going to each and every satellite you can observe here it clearly indicate this is what the earth and this indicates meo which is having much larger distance compared to leo orbit and again geo which is very much more distance compared to meo here this geo is represented as static this meo is in motion this leo is in motion and these are 
the different milliseconds required for the completion of one orbit. This slide is giving much information about these three. What are geosynchronous Earth orbits then? These are synchronous with respect to the Earth. How actually the Earth is completing a rotation? Similarly, these satellites also completing its one rotation. Only three satellites are sufficient to provide the complete connection through the surface of the Earth. To cover the complete Earth, we require only three satellites. Since they are placed in a range of 37 1786 kilometer above the earth surface it is around 36 to 37 thousand kilometers since only three satellites are sufficient to cover complete earth so this orbit of these satellites is circular as we know the rotation of the earth is circular similarly these orbits are also circular and life of these satellites of is around 15 years they must travel in the rotational speed of the earth that's why in the previous diagram I said these geo satellites are considered as static. They are not going to move as the MEO and LEO are taking the motion. These geostationary satellites are static in nature as earth moves these geostationary satellite also moves. And that's why we can say here the rotational speed of the earth and the direction of the motion of the earth will be same as here the geostationary satellite rotations and the orbital period if you consider it is a one day as earth takes 23 hours 56 minutes for a satellite and inclination of the satellite with respect to the earth is concerned it must be at the zero degree exactly at the same particular position the satellite will be there even if earth take the rotation and the satellite will be taking the rotation. There are multiple factors here affecting the geostationary satellite conditions. You can see here the gravitational pull of the sun and moon make the satellites to deviate from their orbit and satellite experiences a centrifugal force due to the rotation of the earth and then non-circular shape of the earth leads to continuous adjustments of speed of the satellite from the earth station. So in the earth station continuously we need to modulate or we need to control the rotation or the movement of the satellite because of some other reasons some other reasons like gravitational pull or the centrifugal force or different factors there might be a slight variation in the speed of the satellite and the motion of the satellite that will be controlled continuously by the earth station as we know we will be having a master control facility mcf in hassan there we can see the controlling function will be done for the geostationary satellites and they are going to keep track of the satellite speed as well as the position and the application of these satellites are used for tv radio broadcasting weather forecast and also they are these are used for the backbone of the telephone networks then we have the next type called low earth orbit satellites they are in the low earth orbit as we can say it is a low earth orbit they are placed in 500 to 1500 kilometers above the surface of the earth and these satellite being closer to the surface of the earth having shorter orbital period around 95 to 120 minutes and smaller signal propagation delays these satellites are going to rotate and these satellites are trying to ensure the high elevation for every spot on the earth and they are going to provide high quality communication and also it provides the bandwidth for mobile towers with the omnidirectional antennas we are going to use which transmit the low transmit power in the range of 1 watt like that and application of these LEO satellites for the communication you can see the project Iridium which is a global communication system by Motorola this is the application of a low earth orbit satellite and what are the disadvantages here here need of many satellites if global coverage is reached since they are very near to the earth it is difficult to cover the complete area of the earth so many satellites are required and higher number of satellites combined with a fast movement result in high complexity also and it requires additional mechanisms for connection handover between the different satellites and short lifetime about 5 to 8 years because of the atmospheric drag and the radiation and need for routing of data packets from the satellites to if a user want to communicate around the world this is required here in the low earth orbit satellites 
and then medium earth orbit satellites they are meos and these are positioned somewhere between leos as well as geos leos are very much near to the earth and geos are very much far from the earth this is leo somewhere here in between we are going to get these satellites orbits we call it as meos the medium earth orbit satellites around at a distance approximately 10000 to 20000 km above the surface of the earth and it requires only dozen of satellites to cover the complete earth region and they have orbital period of 6 to 12 hours and these orbits are generally polar in nature are mainly used for the communication and navigation applications and depending on the inclination it can cover large population so it requires few handovers also this is about the medium earth orbit satellites let us see the disadvantages here due to the large distance from the earth compared to leos the delay increases obviously it is about 70 to 80 milliseconds of delay we are going to suffer and these satellites need higher transmit power and special antennas for the smaller footprints and applications are tv broadcasting point to multi point communication and mobile services weather forecasting for these applications we will be having satellites in the orbit of medium earth orbits here you can see the complete differences between geos meos as well as leos and with respect to the altitude latency earth coverage satellite required data gateways antenna speed these are given here in this table you can refer this advantages and disadvantages also for your more information and few applications i have mentioned here we are using satellites for weather forecasting telephone communication television broadcasting radio broadcasting gps services obviously internet and also here you can see satellite technology applications are mentioned as military defense marine dth direct to home broadcasting and satellite phones commercial aerospace these are the different services we can expect from the satellite technology in the next video let us see microwave communication and the elements of microwave communication and different types thank you